probably listening. All right. Well, you know what? I'm not going to worry about it. Everybody, welcome. I'm Scott Hoverman. With me, I have Mr. Corin Nimick. I just and came out of the Stargate from my home planet of Kelowna. <laughs> and here with, with Ming and Mike, also from a shareduniverse.com. It was Ming and Mime, I'm, but, but you know, we got I liked the Mime deal better. working. So, yes, I, I I got out of my glass box. Yeah, and for sure. By the way, that uh, corn that looks like my old my my last colonoscopy behind you. So very cool. Yeah. Is that good or uh, bad? I can't tell. I think it's good because I'm still here. So your ass takes yeah, could you, takes people to another dimension. I you could know you send, I, could you send a uh, a small troop of, of of special forces units in there? I you know what if they're <laughs> if they're lady, ladies who want to you know have a party go to town. Let's see what happens. Mm. It's one of those don't ask, don't tell things. <laughs> All right, let's let's don't ask, let's not tell. <laughs> well, guys, how things how things been going this past week? I haven't seen you all since last week. I let's see. So far, so good. Do we? Well, we uh, we took a road trip, Mike and I. Oh yes, we took um, a uh, a very important. Um, we saw something that we thought we would never ever see in our yeah, life. Yeah, something that no one thought they would. The outdoors. <laughs> he saw the outdoors. <laughs> we saw the outdoors. <laughs> that very true. Yeah. Um, but no, uh, Brian Johnson got married. Brian Johnson, the comic oh, wow. man, uh, lifelong bachelor, fifty some odd years, and he got married this past uh, week. Yeah. So, insanity. We yeah. yeah, we really thought we would never see this. Ever we were happen. there. And uh, Did they wait till she? So she she waited till she got out of high school or? Barely. <laughs> oh, oh! No, it's not right a, out of the gate. That's not Cor right out of the Stargate. Corn, Corn that's not right a joke. Right no, out of the really Stargate. Gate. Yeah, <laughs> it's not. It's not a joke. And um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 actually, I, I, never mind. That was way out of line. There. <laughs> no, not really. Yeah. Uh, so he got he got married midweek in out of state, and uh, you know, I, I when I first got the invitation i was like i think there's a typo on here this is 2020 on it and I was, then i was like oh wait this is not a typo no it's it's yeah. my, my friend my idiot friend is getting married in the middle of a pandemic yeah so it's like okay awesome. and yeah, so what, what else do you expect though i mean for brian we would and i was like there ain't no way i'm missing this Absolutely. Well, it's funny because yeah, we just did that. We, you know, not not that we have to talk about it much in this, but we just did that. Uh, you know, the tour throughout. You know, like a three thousand mile trip through five states, seventeen cities, sixty interviews, a whole bunch of interactions. You know, in the middle of a pandemic, and I just went out to L.A. to do a movie and tested negative. I mean, you know. <laughs> Yeah, of course you did. People were like, "You're totally gonna get it. You're such a fool. You're an idiot." And I was like, "Negative." <laughs> there you go. See, I passed. Yeah, but you know, we wore masks. We were very safe, and uh, it was it was a great time. It was uh, it was a beautiful awesome. ceremony, and uh, yeah, everything went everything went really well. Did they have to wear a mask at the ceremony? We we did. We did. Yeah, we did. No, no, I meant the uh, bride and groom. No, they didn't. No, they, they didn't. didn't. But okay, everybody. Uh, I mean, that would have been awkward. It's a very it's small. Crowd. What would you say? About 15, 18 people there. No, there was uh, about 30, 30. Okay, I'm bad with numbers, so right. we were, which we're, is ironic. We were within the guideline. <laughs> um, well, um, Mike, you didn't get a chance to meet Corin last time we, we did this. No, I, um, uh, I think you joined in the chat, but yeah, you didn't get a chance to do it. So just to officially introduce Corin, Mike, Mike, Corin. Pleasure. I was I, I absolutely Mike. adored um, uh, Parker Lewis Can't Lose. So, you know. Oh, thanks, brother. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm like. Really? It's only getting three seasons? You idiots? Do you, you have we did 78 episodes. We were 10 episodes short of the minimum for syndication. I know. I, uh, which really has hurt. <laughs> I, what I would have done was, you know, sick um, Abraham Ben Ben Ruby on them. And because he, he looks like he could destroy things like. Yes, yeah, so yeah, we thought of that, but he uh, he's actually the nicest guy you've ever met and the softest most most malleable man you've ever you've ever touched in your life and uh and he he'll what? be useless in a fight. Uh, well, <laughs> you put him in front of like five guys and you intimidate them. Just have them back down cuz those those Hollywood suits, they're all pusses. So, I mean, yeah. <laughs> 
He wants what? He can have. Well, if, I, if I can intimidate my way to the top, believe me, I, I, I would be yeah. doing that right now. Perfect. There you are. Actually, something I had forgotten about, I was reminded of, we were talking about a little bit earlier. I forgot he was actually in Webster. Yes, I was, was Nikki Papadopoulos, Papadopoulos the living Webster. cousin of uh, oh. Oliver Webster. Oh, my God. <laughs> final season. Yeah, of course. You were the, you yeah. were the cousin Oliver of Webster. How does that feel? You want to hear Nikki Papadopoulos. My, so my family, uh, it's just Come the on, worst storylines ever. My family, uh, I guess it was uh, Alex Karras's brother was my dad. I guess is the way it worked out. And they were moving to Africa to teach. This is a true story. Moving to Africa to teach natives how to grow potatoes. And I didn't want to go to Africa to help teach natives how to grow potatoes. So they let me move in with them. And I got to stay with Webster for the final season. And it was in that storyline that I realized that this was the last season this show would ever be on air. <laughs> I was like, who the hell doesn't know how to grow potatoes? I don't care what country you're I'm in. Throw them in the ground and you forget about them for six months and then you're fine. Were you on the bottom bunk? They'll grow on your kitchen counter. If you leave a potato on your kitchen counter for too long, you'll have like 10 potatoes in a Probably month. True. Yes. Or not in a month, but 10 months. <laughs> the sleeping arrangements in Webster, were you, uh, were you on the bottom bunk? We shared a bedroom. No, we shared a bedroom. Side, okay. a bed side by side. Oh, side by side. Um, I was a little, little too, little Ricky a little too big to go right down the. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, he had that that secret uh, stair staircase or the secret ladder he would take from his bedroom downstairs, and he'd come out behind a a a, a, a grandfather clock or something. I was yeah. too big to fit in there. So are, are we talking about Webster, Alf, or Batman? <laughs> <laughs> All three. All three. Yeah. yeah. I think. He, I think. I, well, I think Webster played Alf. Uh, would have been possibly. He, he might still be I, um, playing out. Yeah, I thought I Webster know. had like a little dumb one there, didn't he? Uh, that he would go up and yeah, down. He had that weird little, yeah, he could go up and down exactly. What they they Emmanuel Lewis was, was, was the coolest waiter, please. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Here, here, here you go. This Here's a, a I'll give you an insight. Yeah, I'll go. give you an insider story <laughs> on these <laughs> on, the, on the Mam and George. There he is. So Mam and George, uh, Mam and George were actually married in real life when the show started and everything oh, wow. and they got divorced during the show. And by the time my season came around, they, they were so volatile on set towards each other that, uh, that they had to split them off to separate sides of the sound stage. So one had uh, hair and makeup and wardrobe on one side of the sound stage, the other on the other. And the only time they would ever cross paths was while we were shooting, they wouldn't even go to read throughs. They wouldn't even rehearse. We had to rehearse without them. Oh, and uh, and and when they would come on set, they would get into these tiffs, and they had the worst language you could imagine. They had to stop <laughs> shooting in front of a studio audience because of the arguments that that, that Mam and George would get into in <laughs> front of all these kids and their parents. I'm talking the C word, the D word, oh. the B word, lots of Fs, and <laughs> all the other things. Oh, that and I would just so there like, awesome. I was like 13 years old. I'm like, what the. <laughs> What the I F hate this job? <laughs> I've been like, I love this job. What's the what's the speed <laughs> dial for the National Enquirer? Yeah, no shit. I, yeah. Oh, I, I mean, I, I, they, I mean, because I I'm sure you know this, Corin, but this was originally they it wasn't supposed to be Webster. It was supposed to be like the Papadopoulos's, and it was essentially they shopped it around as they're a loving couple, and he's a former quarterback. Then they threw. They're like, well, you know, uh, Gary Coleman is making billions of dollars for NBC, and ABC was like, we want some of that. Uh, no, it was, but it was Emmanuel Lewis that, that they uh, cast in that, though, not Gary Coleman. No, that but they got uh, another one who wasn't going to grow much bigger than like a potato. He grew so, less than Gary Coleman. Yes, so they're like cha-ching, but they 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 were like, oh my god, I can't believe that. This kid's calling the shots now because they wanted to be executive producers on the show, and I mean I'm not telling any schools out of uh, telling <laughs> telling any tales out of school, but um, you know yeah. this is stuff that I've I've heard and like researched and it's like really it was just supposed to be like the Papadopoulos and then they they with brought Webster, in, but they brought in Webster and <laughs> Webster. When I was on the show, yeah, when I was on the show, Webster was already 18. 
He was 18 years old. I mean, he was a grown man. I mean, he was very smart, though, with his money. He, he, he invested in a lot of real estate in Atlanta, where he was from. He was from Georgia originally. I ran into him years later at an event at Universal Studios when I was in my late 20s or something. Hadn't seen him since we did the show. And he was just blinged out, gold chains, this, that. He's like, I'm making money. <laughs> I was like, damn it. I chose the wrong business. <laughs> he, yeah, you should have been in real estate. He's, he's like, I, I'm the first guy to ever make it rain. And he's like, Glick. He's over at the Claremont Lounge. Yeah. <laughs> woo, woo, is baby. He, uh, Emmanuel Lewis? I believe he is still alive. Uh, Emmanuel Lewis, li alive or dead? Alive right? or dead? I believe he's alive. Okay. So I think, I still, I think yeah. so. I think so. I haven't heard anything to the contrary. I didn't hear that he got COVID or anything. So we're, we're good. Oh, I thought. Yes, exactly. I, exactly. I, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I personally don't know anybody who's had it myself. I mean, literally nobody. I don't know anybody personally that I actually know that has had it. Not one family or otherwise, which, you know, doesn't mean anything, but it's peculiar. Well, I believe, uh, in, in my job, we've actually run across quite a few. Luckily, I haven't had any family members. I know I'll catch it yet. But, yeah. but you know, <clears throat> I'm telling you right now, I, I, I firmly believe I probably had it back in November. Because I think I guess, you still have it. Uh, I might. Um, I think you're a permanent uh, case of COVID. Come here. Um, but uh, <laughs> but I was, uh, you know, back in November, I was sick as a dog and kept coming up negative for the flu and everything else. But I was down and out for about two and a half weeks. It was the cheap tequila you drank. Right? <laughs> it was that drink. <laughs> yeah, and that, ran flu. that rancid po' boy that you ate. Too. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> you can't get unrefrigerated for 12 weeks. Right. Come on, Scott. <laughs> I don't care. It's 11 and a half weeks, so leave me alone. <laughs> Ming is starting. Oh, now that's a dare. <laughs> What's going down, Ming? How about you, man? We haven't talked in a minute. How's I, life? I've been doing good. I was hoping, uh, I know you, you got a job and you had to, you had to swing back, um, you know, back to where you are now. But um, I, I, if you make it up here, uh, I would love to be on. We We would love to be on. For sure, we would love for you to shoot here at the studio. Yeah, that'd be great. Come into the studio. It'd we be have fantastic. gear here. We got lights. We got yeah. camera. We got action. Lights, camera. We got right. microphone. Well, if, he come, if he comes up, I'm I'm coming up with him. Too. <laughs> yeah, no, no, you're invited. It. You're invited for sure. Yeah, uh, we want to we want to make it happen. You know, we we finished another uh, another fundraise, but it, but uh, the you know most most of that is uh, is yes to have some money on the side to to be able to secure an RV. It, you know, yep. when we get a little bit closer. But at at at, at this. Uh, uh, at this point, we need to finish a documentary version of everything we shot. We yeah, need to condense this whole thing down into a single story, into some kind of, you know, to, to make sense out of it all. And then and then we'll have to go in for another fundraiser because I'd really rather do this without taking money out of people's pockets and do sure. it through either, you know, e either through um, a network or through, you know, a corporate sponsorship or some other way. Um, because uh, if, if, if everybody out there is hurting as much as I'm hurting right now financially, I don't want to take their money. I'm going to leave you for a second with Corin, but I'll just deal with but, something real uh, quick, but I'll be right back. Yeah, beat it, Scram. I got this. Uh, but so, you know, so we, we really do. I mean, I, I would love to see us get back on the road before the end of the year, uh, if possible. But, you know, based on, on – uh, you know what what the last run took it was i mean it, it was 16k budget that i put four of my own into and uh and i couldn't afford that but i did it because it needed to be done and uh, and we ended up coming back literally having to call our producer benjamin easterday and ask for an extra 100 bucks from him just to fill the gas tank up to get it back to the rv place that's <laughs> that's how we got back home it was rough wow it was rough. Uh, God, yeah, I, and it, the fact that you so much more expensive than I thought, and the fact that you you were even even able to get an RV is a is a miracle. Um, although I just saw Rosario Dawson just got just got uh someone lent her an RV. And she's like driving around with her dad or something. That's and, awesome. Uh, yeah, what? She, <laughs> yeah, you should call up Rosario. Did she watch? Did she watch Love America tour? What the hell? That's I don't know. Exactly she was it, but Rosario, I, trying to steal my gold here, trying to. <laughs> <laughs> You're bling. You're, she's, she's trying my to work for you. I, um, my bling yeah. is a bunch of is a bunch of Buddhist pair beads. <laughs> that, that's bling. That's that's legit. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. the yeah. silent bling, I call it. Chase, Chase says we have the stargaze. The, the Zen stargaze. bling. <laughs> yeah, she teamed up with right now, right? She teamed up with something called uh, Outdoorsy, and uh, I guess they, I don't know if they gave her the RV, but um, 
Hers, hers looks really fancy. There's a spice rack here. There the are back, plants in there. She's got plants in hers. So Look, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. We had the 1980s <laughs> World, uh, Wrestling Feder Federation parking lot version. Oh no, that sucker was fine. I think there's a picture on here somewhere of it. Still, yeah, I mean, yes, it was. It was fine, but oh, it no, was it was eight miles per gallon for three thousand four hundred miles. Gotcha. Look like <laughs> look like the big gym camper when we were kids. It, it was it was rough. I'll tell you that we spent more on gas than we did on the rental. <laughs> it looked like something Hulk Hogan would be dragging around. It, like it totally was a Hulk Hogan. Yeah, it was amazing, <laughs> amazing. But uh, but we're doing other stuff down here. We got um, I, I just finished writing a pilot script for a series for Jason London and I called uh, Blackwater Blues to shoot here locally in Ocean Springs. And uh, now we're developing out the next 11 episodes because we'd like to have 12 episodes total as a single season and block shoot all of them, you know, in a very short amount of time and uh, and deliver a full season, you know, of a show uh, by by early next well, year. We, we could have two movie stars come down and actually um, be in with it with for you as well. What? Which got, ones? Got, got mime and me. Which one? Yeah, which one? <laughs> mime and me. <laughs> you're never gonna live up. You're never, you're never gonna outlive this. Like you're, you're forever known as mime. <laughs> I, I can call up Webster. He can be there in an hour and a half. <laughs> His name is Emmanuel. <laughs> uh, His name is forever Webster. His name is Emmanuel. It, it is forever Webster. Coleman, Coleman, I would have called like me with Parker Lewis. I can't go to France without somebody going Parker Lewis. <laughs> Parker Lewis. Parker Lewis. Oh, I have to accept it. I like how they say my name better than they do in America, though. It's, it's, it's kind of sexy. <laughs> See, I don't know. You know that's but, the thing. Is a lot of people, this is one of the weird things. See, I, didn't realize, like I, said, I was going through and looking through some stuff, and I didn't realize this, but so you've got the Stargate franchise under you, but you also have Star Trek under your belt as well. Well, kind of. it was the Renegade. It was the Renegade version of Star Trek. Uh, you know, it was, it was sort of but you under have to the be a, You have to be a Starfleet captain. Uh, honestly, you know, it's just so weird because, it, it, you know, and I don't want to disparage studios and networks and all of that stuff, but it's kind of like if it's not their idea, it's a bad idea kind of thing. And of Renegades as a TV series would have been excellent. It would have been a great show. Great, It had a great cast, had great people involved with it. Uh, all kinds of classic, you know, actors from all the original sci-fi series and all that stuff. I mean, just an incredible group. And uh, and the network just absolutely, they were like, we're doing the, the, the franchise for the feature films right now. We don't want to go back into television, this, that. Every excuse in the book. And they, they did it on the web. And, and people responded well to it. I was amazed at what they were able to accomplish with it. I myself, unfortunately, had just gotten out of, uh, of a major surgery from when I got in the boat wreck in Belize. And it shattered my femur in seven pieces and was, you know, in re physical rehab for like a year and a half, all kinds of stuff. So I wasn't even able to really walk when I did the first episode of Renegades. So if you watch the episode, I'm actually only getting up out of the chair, taking a couple of steps, say a couple of lines and then kind of sit back down. I was like, I can't do much more than this, guys. Not without my cane. <laughs> well, give me a cane. That'd be awesome. You'll be like uh, you wasn't Pike. No, it wasn't Pike. It was you know what that that would have been cool. That would have been awesome. You know? It could, yeah, it could have been yeah, how they used to have the old canes that they yeah, would pull a sword guns, out yeah. of it or have like a, a 22 pulls, shot in it or something. Pulls a phaser out of yeah. a, a cane. That'd be yeah. awesome. Who wouldn't watch that? I love that idea. Yeah, but uh, I, I would watch it. I don't have your uh, reticence to disparage the fucking suits. Pardon my French, those bastards. <laughs> Those those sacks of shit uh, ruin everything. They they ruin everything. Bean counting stuff hey. of crap. Well, I'm a little I'm I'm a little tired of the reboots of a lot of things. You know, uh, actually, they, they they did try to pitch a reboot of Parker Lewis. I pitched a reboot of Parker Lewis to Lon Diamond, one of the creators of the show. Mm -hmm. Unbeknownst to me, he already had an idea for a reboot that uh, I didn't really know about, but he, he got my buy-in on being in a reboot, went to Clyde Phillips, uh, the, uh, the, uh, you know, creator of the show and all that along with him and pitched his reboot instead of mine. And then without me around, they went and pitched that reboot to Sony and Sony just laughed in a while. Like, but he was just, it was, it was the same idea. I mean, no, no offense, Lon, but it was the same idea of like, uh, 
you know, the family, the, the kids of Parker Lewis and the crew are now in Santo Domingo High School and their parents are there. So you're literally like just tripled the size of the cast overnight because now you have all the original cast and all of their kids, mm -hmm. their kids' friends. You know, it was like a cast of 24 freaking people every fucking episode. And, uh, and, and my idea was original cast and it's called Parker Lewis Can't Win. His only good times were in high school. After high school, everything went to shit. <laughs> <laughs> and he just can't seem to get a leg up. He's sleeping on on Kubiak's couch. You know, Kubiak's a famous wrestler now. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Troy uh, Slayton, who actually is a lawyer, criminal defense lawyer, is like a judge. And Mus Musso is now the the uh, the mayor of Santo Domingo, no longer the principal. Is she still hot? And, uh, <laughs> She's still hot. You know, I don't know, but I'll tell you this: she ate a lot of broccoli. <laughs> oh god okay that i didn't need to know but all right ate a lot of broccoli well then her colonoscopy yes. is probably as amazing as the stargate behind you <laughs> it should be very crystalline and uh and, and shiny yes excellent um that Ooh. again if if you had pitched it in France, I think you would have had it like knocked out Paco Louis of course we will do a reboot for you yeah, I like the David Hasselhoff of France. That's awesome. And there's, I mean, I actually did a couple of, uh, I did a, some, uh, a French web series, a really, really cool one called Noob, N O O B. And um, I did a few episodes of it. And a great, great show. It's a, it's a basically the, the, it's, it's everybody's avatars inside the world of a video game. And that's oh, who you're cool. following. So you never, you know. Yeah, and uh, very well done. Um, and uh, I ended up doing a few of the episodes when I would be over there for conventions. I would just schedule it, you know, and we'd go and shoot these things. And it's a kind of a Middle Ages type of deal, too, which is awesome. So I got to wear the crazy, you know, costumes and stuff. And then we got uh, – uh, we ended up doing a, a um, Parker Lewis reunion at, um, at Paris Comic Con and uh, – <clears throat> or, or Paris Manga. I think it was Paris Manga, but uh, went over there. So it was me, a Ben Ruby who played Kubiak, mm -hmm. uh, Troy Slayton who played Jerry, mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, Billy uh, uh, Jane who played Mikey, and 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 Maya Bruton who played um, uh, my sister. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so while we were over there, they they really wanted to have Abe in the in the uh, in in the. Um, the web series as well. And this is a huge web series. It gets millions of views and stuff. So, uh, and, 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 it, and he was totally down. So we, we figured out another uh, plan. We went over, did a different convention a few months later, went to Toulon, France, uh, and, and spent like a few days there shooting this episode. And it is just a great, great episode. If anybody can find it on YouTube, it's a, it's noob N O O B. But, uh, but we did a classic. I don't know if anybody remembers Parker Lewis, but we always feed him those fishes. Sure. <clears throat> so um, in the end of the episode, there's a moment where me and him have a reconciliation because we're, you know, like in this in the in the show, we have like a beef and then we have a reconciliation. And so we're sitting there. I was like, oh, I got to feed him a fish at the end of the reconciliation. I have to pull out a fish and feed him. And they were like, we don't have one. I was like, go find a fish. And so they sent a runner down to like all these restaurants and finally found like a, a full sardine. <laughs> like, I mean, this thing was disgusting. <laughs> An actual sardine, not a gummy fish, and, and drove it up there. It was all warm and disgusting. <laughs> and, uh, and he went for it, though. He threw the whole thing in his mouth and we I hate did his little munchy thing. There was guts coming out of it. And oh, stuff. God. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, so good. Yeah. So good. Can I have another? Yeah, let's let's do another one. It was me. hilarious. It was um, hilarious. I only bought you one fish. You only ask for one fee. Yeah. You're not joking. Un poisson. Un poisson. Uh, wait, this French web series, did you have to speak French or was it all a, were you able to maintain? No, no. The, yeah. The way that they, the way that they worked it is, is similar to how you would have online. We have translating, you know, translating apps and all of that. As we're talking, you know, the translating app goes into effect. Uh, subtitles. The, the, okay. Which of, of course is very distracting so. if you're doing that while you're, you're talking. <laughs> it just it's just what it, i'm saying it's, it's wiggles it's, it's, it's captions it's yeah. closed caption <laughs> yeah, that's cool that you have a huge like french contingent that is uh, amazing I, where I do we have that. a do we have a contingent we have anywhere? no we don't even have an american contingent oh so. sometimes it's not like, that. like, yeah. you know, like you know how hasselhoff made it big in germany you know we're probably big in north korea that's where i, I see comic book men being huge that's it's why things are falling apart there now I, of course <laughs> 
Would you go? Would you take a Dennis Rodman like uh, ambassador oh, trip to next year. North Korea? Oh my God! Not even in no. Uh oh, Katzo's back. Everybody, Dude, I would totally do it. Yeah, Katzo's back. Katzo's he says back. hi, Scott, Ming, and Mike, and all the chat. <laughs> Man, Corky. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Oh, cats! So oh, you, you, my nemesis. Oh. I actually, I'm, not, uh, I'm gonna leave I, that one because that was too easy. You just teed that up for me, but I'm not gonna do it. Nemesis. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nemesis. 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 Oh, get it going. Oh. That was a nice little tee. Yeah. Yeah. I'm surprised that's not already out there. Cornemic sis. I'm sure someone has probably tweeted it. Well, I've, I, I've been a little around. less uh, less um, uh, on on the the social media the, the the last number of weeks. You know, sometimes I have to like take a step back and kind of like readjust myself and deal with real life stuff. You know what I mean? I don't uh, like being uh, on Twitter when I'm not in a good mood. <laughs> Let's put it that way. I don't like I, being on Twitter. <laughs> I think you. I think Mike only tweets when he's in a bad mood. Is that too? No, no. I I tweet when I'm in a good mood. I do. I I only tweet when I'm in a good mood because I can't deal with all the other crap. And there's stuff on there that's like just like world ending. I'm like, I I don't need this. I'm no, thank you. Well, uh, Mike, did you ever hit your 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 goal on Instagram yet? No. Nah. Now we're there. We're getting there. Let's see where we're. Let's. Oh my look. God! I forgot uh, about Instagram. I haven't, I haven't uh, checked Instagram. Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> I think has crossed the ninety-seven hundred uh, follower mark. Oh, nice. Seven hundred seventeen. I've got ninety-seven followers. nineteen. Unless so people 200, are trying to get about to ten thousand, so he can do all the fancy stuff on. Two hundred eighty-three oh. You can do it. Ten thousand people. Oh, fancy and shit. Start posting people, again. And we were gonna give, st and we gave stuff away, and people are still like, well, they're still, they're still following. I'm getting dribs and drabs, you know. It, you know, it sucks I just, uh, to be that close. No, it, it's it's more for <laughs> a, a shared universe than it is for me. So, all right, there we go. We got another. Did you just take a picture, <laughs> Ming. We did. did. We have to get his follower count. I have to get my follower count up. So you I'll, gotta get the follower count up. I know. Here, we, we need to put him and him and Corin side by side on here. That way, you can get a picture of them two together to post on there. <laughs> I, uh, I'll, I'll just grab a, actually, I'm gonna yeah, grab yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not gonna help. It's gonna make it worse for you, Mike. I, I, no, I grab the screenshot so. that will be online. I'll take all the I'll take all the Frenchies I can get, and the Belgies. <laughs> I was just talking about murder. You know, Belgium is a strange place. I'm gonna tell you. Uh, you know, in Bruges is is not too far from the truth. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they love dipping French fries in mayonnaise. I never understood that. Oh but, no, no, I can't do it. Well, that's an Aussie thing too, though. That's a, uh, they like they they do that down in Australia. See, Australia, I can get because they have stuff that'll kill them, uh, like literal, <laughs> like stuff that we take for granted, like spiders. They have spiders that will kill them, even if you just like oh, step. We have brown, we have brown recluses right. in the U.S. But they got Paul Hogan, too. He'll kill you. And Paul Hogan will kill you. Oh, that's not oh, with his breath, but <laughs> that's <laughs> he, can he does look life. like his <laughs> breath is a little sketchy. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I will say that. I'll, I'll say that. You know, when I worked with when I worked with Charlton Heston on uh, a movie oh. called Solar Crisis, oh. uh, it was it was myself. He played my grandfather in it, and it was myself, Jack Palance, Peter Boyle, uh, Tim Matheson was in it. It was a huge sci-fi film. We spent it was it was like forty two, forty six million dollar budget in the late eighties. So you know, it would have been like a hundred and something million dollar budget. You know, in more modern times, and uh, but. Uh, a uh, really interesting film, but we had a scene where I'm like washed up on shore, half drowned, and and Charlton comes over and he's like, "Son, oh!" and he's hugging me and holding me, and I was like, "Mothballs, mothballs!" His <laughs> breath I was like, "Mothballs, why, why, why mothballs of all things?" <laughs> that's it was in your brain, dude. But oh. I've been on a, I've been on a Charlton Heston bender lately because they have a they they've been doing a TMC uh, or TCM whatever uh, Turner uh, Classic, Turner Classic yeah. movies thing on with with him. So I've been watching like a bunch of his movies, some of them that I've never seen before. In fact, I'd never seen Khartoum. What? I couldn't have believed oh. that I hadn't seen Khartoum. What a great film! But uh, but I was really bummed when I watched um, uh, Soylent Green uh, uh, night before last. I remember the ending being so much more dramatic and like, you know, epic 
than it was. I mean, he only said soil and green is people twice. Yeah, of course. In the end. I could have sworn he went on about it for like three and a half minutes. No, that's that's the childhood uh, memories. I remember stuff being way better than it is now. Because oh. when when you think about it, when we were growing up, what did we have? We had TV that our parents chose. I oh. remember loving Quincy. Remember Quincy M.E.? Go back and watch it now. You'll, how the fuck did Jack Klugman get this show? He's an old, bitter man <laughs> who's wandering around in a station wagon, and he's getting hot women, well, hot-ish women who are like 20 years younger than him. So they were, so he's like, even back then, he was 123. So, you know. <laughs> He's macking on Helen Hayes, and you're like, well, Helen's not too bad. How did he score her? So, and you're like, Brian Johnson. Well, well, yeah. In a I way, yeah. Yes. In a way, yeah. Yes, I'll say yes. So, but you're like, this was, and in your mind, you're like, Quincy was the, he was the shit. And then you watch it, and you're like, hey, he's a fucking tool. <laughs> Holy crap. What did I, I wasted my childhood. Oh, thank God for the odd. <laughs> I was I was trying to get because uh, me and David Faustino were you know we had done a, a number of films together and we were oh. you know had a production company together and we were trying to you know really launch some stuff. We did a web series that was just the watch if you get a chance. I'm telling you, uh, I don't know if know. anybody should watch it. I, if anybody saw some of the episodes, I would they would they would burn me at the stake. But oh great, that's we, we were trying to get uh, we, were, we were trying to get Simon and Simon off the ground again with me and him playing Simon and Simon. <laughs> oh, that that's fantastic. Uh, we met David. That would have been hilarious. Oh, that would have been great. We met David at a uh, con. Great guy. And oh, he's the best man. Yeah, just a really, really nice guy. He threatened to kill me. It was great. Why why did he threaten to kill you? Oh, you mean was that after was that was that after work? Was that was that at the bar oh, later? Oh no, we were at uh I was having a cigar, he was having a a smoke, and um we were talking. He's like, uh, you got a really good voice. And I'm like, Oh, well, thank you. And he's like, Do you do voiceover work? And I'm like, well, that's the dream. And he's like, if you ever uh, take a job away from me, I, I will kill you. I, I said, will. I, I'm like, <laughs> that's, that's totally something David would say. And I'm like, that's totally something would say. cool. Can I use you the reference? <laughs> and he's like, uh, I, I will kill you for asking me that. Right. And I'm like, you're a pretty funny fucking guy. And he's like, I, I'm going to have to kill you for that, too. What do you mean I'm funny? What, like I'm I'm some kind of clown? <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm like, that's all right. We're, we're going a little deep here. All right. Thanks, David. But he's just a really nice guy, and uh, we had a great time. We did in the middle of nowhere in Minnesota. Minnesota. Literally in the middle, middle of, of nowhere. nowhere. But it was great. It was a great time. It was a great con. I'm like, but Minnesota is the middle of nowhere. So if you're in min the middle of nowhere, you're in the middle of the middle of nowhere. Oh, absolutely. I'm like, where's Walnut Grove? And they're like, that's not real. <laughs> I'm like, well, yeah. that sucks. You can left in Bumfuck, Egypt. Yeah. <laughs> Minnesota is yeah. one of those states that the new generation has never even heard of. Right. It's like, M, what? You know, the, the abbreviations <laughs> are looking down. They're like, I don't even know half of these M's. So it's a state, <laughs> <All> right, whatever. <laughs> well, yeah. They, uh, what was, well, unless you know the Vikings, that's about the only thing you know from Minnesota. Yeah. Well, now you got great to, show. You, great you, show, you by the way. The, oh, Vikings. Oh, <laughs> yeah, great show. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't know they shot it in Minnesota, but yeah, but it was it was oh. uh, it was in the backwoods. <laughs> so, yeah, what 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 are you guys seeing on your on your feed? Are you guys seeing some uh, some? Do, do you have a different yeah. feed than us in terms of uh, of comments and yeah, everything? We got, on there? we got all the comments here. They're uh, <laughs> very small though. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But, um, if anybody wants, yeah, please ask questions. If you have questions of Corin or oh yeah, or me, if you just want to if you just, just want to whoever. talk some shit, that's fine too. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's a, he was younger than old Corky now. Okay, oh, yeah, oh Katso again. again. Oh Katso, he was still younger than old Corky. Katso's now. I don't know what that means, means, but I take offense to it. Oh. I would because it's <laughs> from Katso for God's sakes. Uh, shout out to oh, actually, somebody, uh, Constant. Yeah, shout out to Christopher. They're saying they got the John Wick statue from you too. Thank you. Do, us, do not thank us. Thank Fanboy Collectibles. Yes. And uh, we yep. will be unboxing stuff today. Is that how you spell John, or is that the Swedish version, Yon, or what is that? Yon, Yon Wick. Yon Wick. Is that Yon Wick? Yon Wick. Yon Wick. Yon Wick. Yon Wick. Yon Wick. Yon Wick. He's gonna say something like, "I've got finger, right? I'm making fun of me." 
This is worse than that time actually, we were attacked by Cat's own Nemec. Uh -huh. And, and <laughs> Mil Milky, I, I beg to differ. I am the Scott. <laughs> <laughs> the one and only. Corin, how long have you been in Biloxi? Uh, well, I, I like to say that I'm in Ocean Springs. Okay, yeah, how long have you been in Ocean Springs? A quaint, lovely little town. <laughs> um, uh, currently, I mean, I was only here for about a week or so. Then I went back out to L.A. to go do a shoot. And then came back here uh, where I'm staying currently, you know, until uh, until I get some things going on. Uh, I, you know, most people already know it's not it's not a sob story. But, you know, uh, the 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 um, the shutdown put me completely out of work. I lost three, um, uh, three appearances, two films. And by month four, I had two choices, sell my house or get my ex-wife out of her rental property and get her and my son into my house save that money and and get out on my own and yeah. just do the you know you know 20 year old couch hopping scenario for a while until i can figure shit out because uh you know i there was just no reason for our family to lose a house yeah, over the whole thing yeah no you absolutely know. right on and well, I'll tell you, well i i'm pretty sure we we, we already got j jrb and jason london down here so I got a feeling for too much longer. Corn's going to be living down here. As well, well, when we do, we, yeah, that's why we that's why we created the series. Uh, you know, it's a great concept. Uh, Blackwater Blackwater Blues is the name of it, and uh, you know, Jason and I will star in it. And it's a a kind of a murder mystery type of deal, trying to solve the the murder of our mother who was killed when we were much younger. Don't let you and uh, yeah, so we got to figure out. We have a series of clues left to us by a, our dead grandfather, and we got to follow those clues with all the different local, you know conspirators and uh and figure it out uh so you know uh simple but effective and i think that uh, i think we got our hands on something that we can do for a uh, relatively inexpensive uh cost and and be able to knock out a whole season in a short amount of time well so we got a question here uh chris was asking uh what comic books did you grow up with corn did you read comics <laughs> up or, or? i grew up with heavy metal there you go that's, that's, <laughs> actually that's legit very, very uh yeah i was more into like gra the gra also uh, also the elf stones of shannara comic uh the comic um collection more the graphic novel collection there was like a series of 12 or whatever uh those those i was huge on because yeah. there was a lot of elf sex going on in there that just my mom was not aware of <laughs> right well, believe it or not with heavy heavy metal issue heavy metal just came out this week oh heavy metal my mom had no idea what was inside of the yeah. and mad magazine yeah. I was a huge Mad Magazine fan, uh, and uh, but I wasn't really into the traditional, you know, comic books and stuff like that. I really wasn't. It was like Mad Magazine, Heavy Metal, and you know, the Elf Stones of Shannara. That was about as far as I went. Which is odd <laughs> because Corin is actually a, a incredible artist in his own right, uh, which not That's a lot true. of people know about. No, 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 a lot of people do know. I, I, I mean, I, I started doing graffiti art when I was uh, 10, 11 years old as a break dancer, and and then. Uh, moved from Atlanta to Los Angeles and ended up in school with some proper graffiti artists. And uh, when I was in eighth grade and ended up really getting into the scene, became quite well known. In fact, I, I, I think I made the newspaper as a graffiti artist before I made the newspaper as an actor. Uh <laughs> Well, mostly the oh, I had a, yeah. I had a five thousand dollar. I had a five thousand dollar reward out for me in tenth grade. That's wow. awesome. <laughs> yeah, Mike uh, had a five dollar reward. True story. It's a story. <laughs> <in 10th grade. laughs> now, That's but I've continued to do it. I, I still do this graffiti art and the street art and all of that stuff. I traveled all over the world doing it. I love it. Great, you're great actually, way to express uh, express myself. You're actually Banksy, aren't you? You know what? If I was, I I I wouldn't be at uh, at Three Alarm Comics right now, because he just sold one of his last uh, one of his last pieces for like a, like a million three or something. So, no, <laughs> well, I mean, crazy. you could you could be at worse places than Three Alarm Comics. Can you? Uh, ah, wow. yeah, Scott's not there. I got the balls always off camera. Yeah, I know. He's like, oh crap! Oh, I'll be right back. Pack my computer's in there. <laughs> um, Quick pull the plug. Yeah, no, he's great. I love it here. <laughs> That's all. Yeah, I'll actually, me and Scott have actually been talking about. We've been talking about building a a, a cool uh, live streaming stage here within the comic book yeah, shop. Yeah, uh, certainly. Kind of like swamp house style platform stage. You know, with a with a cutout for the green screen or the or the or the LED or what you know. I mean the the um you know the flat screen or whatever to show back there and have it set up like a traditional talk show stage, but with like tiny. 
<laughs> you know, like a little tiny uh, miniature. Or, it, it could look like the uh, heel set. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeehaw. Put up with, a couple of bales of hay. Yeah, we need that, that, a jug with the XXX on it. Yeah. Oh, we need the honeys then. Oh, the, of course. Yeah, that, that's well, Samantha Sheldon can be one because she says Banksy is British. That's what he wants you to think. That's what he wants you to think. That's not true. That's not true. We don't know if Banksy's. Yeah, British. you don't know we that. We don't know Nobody nothing. You don't know that. We know nothing. Yeah. For sure. He could be Alf. Alf could be Banksy. He could be Webster. We don't know. It could Webster could be Banksy. They see that's why he got all the bling. Damn it! That's now it makes sense. <laughs> now it all makes sense. Why don't you just tell Sir, not to get one of those porta potties right there, just one of those toilet seats, and just he's got one right here. Hey, well, he's he's just go, go through go this, take a leak real quick, and come back through. Yeah, but he's now. He wants to be high, right? Click, Bing. If you if you piss on that, do you, does it go through and it pisses on James Spader on the? I think so. Well, <laughs> it sounds like something I would do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey! Oh my God! What's yeah. up? Holy crap! Oh, you too. What's up? <laughs> hey, what's up? It's good to see you. How are you doing? I'm doing good. What are you doing? No. Oh. Uh, picking up some stuff. That's you know. Rad. Okay. Fair Let's enough. Oh, is that? Are you getting? Are you getting ta that okay, tattoo so on you? Yes. You nice. I thought I thought Look, it she's was, not gonna tell that, you where. That going right on the chest, full size. Oh no. Take, that would be it. awesome. <laughs> would be awesome. No, 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 no. Please, every time uh, we tune in, it's a surprise. Surprise. I love I it. I know, it's great. I love it. Sexy dragons making love. Mm -hmm. Oh no, can you imagine? They're both gay then. <laughs> oh, what well, they have female dragons? No, but that's that's Falco from Never Ending Story, and that's Haru from Spirit Away. And well, we don't know males. how they identify. They might not even identify as dragons. <laughs> yeah. They're actually both lucky dragons. Oh, <laughs> okay. Bye. Love you. Take care. See you, see you soon. Come on, God, don't ruin it. I wish I wish you could go through the Stargate for real. That would be the best <laughs> exit ever. Yeah. That would be. Bye, right, guys. Awesome. I'll see you later. Man. Thanks, Scott. <laughs> oh yeah, you probably could go through there. Yeah, you could. There you go. Wait, here. there you go. Oh yeah, yeah we'll, totally do it. Uh, we'll figure that out later. That's gonna be my exit. Yeah, okay. Cool. Gets his gets his ass stuck in there. Like, I know. Like, like, yeah, or yeah, yeah. Ciao. <laughs> That's fine. It's okay. You're good. All right. Sorry. <laughs> the chaos of live streams. Yes. Well, that was the one thing I was loving about the fact that uh, we were talking about building the stage because he brought up something that, you know, I, I thought was ingenious too. I didn't think about it. we could actually, if we wanted to have an audience set up there, and yes, they could watch the live streams happen. And sure, I thought that would be cool. Like have a little, you know, have some chairs set up and like people can actually come in, have some wine or beer or whatever, a BYOB kind of situation. And yeah, and, uh, even if they want to ham it up and heckle you from the crowd, that's fine. Uh, or heckle me. <laughs> well, you can. The best part is. They're not going to live up to the fact that we're we're a we're a, a shared universe affiliate. <laughs> sure. If you want to kick some money upstairs to the big boys, yes, absolutely. Now we can uh, we can definitely talk about that. <laughs> well, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. I think well, I'm about ready to start taking as soon as you're. Uh, I think I thought with Bing, as soon as the 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 thing runs up for for the stream yard for y'all, I think we're the shop here is going to take over sponsoring next year. So, ooh, nice. Thank you. Well, we'll take you up on that. So, um, so Corin, you've got, um, you're, you're sleeping on Scott's couch, obviously. <laughs> no, not, <laughs> not Scott's, but, uh, but uh, I might be soon. It depends yeah. on what happens with, uh, with my buddy Artie, who I am staying with. Are you, I'm considering moving down there and sleeping on his couch. Um, but you, what do you, what is next for Corin Nemec? What is going on that is, I mean, once quarantine is 95% over. Your your next thing, you know. I mean, to be to be honest, I mean, now that the politicians have a hold of this whole thing, not to go off too far down a rabbit hole, but now that they have a hold of this whole thing, I don't see it going away anytime soon. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> you know I mean, it's a it's a it's a it's a great tool right now. Yeah, of course, you, you know what I mean. It's a great tool. Cluster. So, you know. uh, but that said, you know, um, I I think you know. I have to figure out ways of, of getting stuff off the ground myself. I mean, really, the, you know, I've kept myself working the last 15, uh, 15, 20 years, or, you know, 15 years at least, mm -hmm. you know, 
through personal relationships, relationship with producers, also producing a lot of stuff myself. I when when sci-fi, which unfortunately they they got rid of their original you know uh, movie division and uh, stopped doing all of the sci-fi creature features and action adventures that they used to do, which were great because I was I was I was doing really well. I was doing three or four of those a year. I was producing a bunch of them, and uh, and life was really good. So. Um, uh, and that's how I've ended up doing a lot of the Lifetime films is because those production companies, when sci-fi stopped buying the, the creature features and we stopped getting to do great classics like Sand Sharks and Mansquito and yeah. Dragon Wasps and um, and uh, 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 Raging Sharks. And uh, let me think, where's my, oh, uh, SS Doom Trooper was another one I did. It was Yo, lava, whole, lava oh, oh, no, 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 it was Dracano. Uh, yes, I did one Dracano, which uh, 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 a volcano is, is, is shooting out dragon eggs and i'm the volcanologist who has to save the day so uh, <laughs> you studied mr spock nice i like that uh and also he's out, um, he's out of his vulcan mind who could yeah who could ever forget the classic aids fly i mean really come on yes <laughs> yes yes i agree but so a, lot, a number of those production companies ended up going and doing a lot of the the oxygen network and lifetime style movies uh, not nearly as fun and hilarious, but uh, but so I ended up, you know, going on to some of those, producing some of those, and and acting in some of those, in uh, um, many of those. Now that's what I just got done shooting as well. Was another one of these lifetime uh, thriller type of films. Um, I mean, oddly enough, I mean, as long as I've been in the industry, as many shows as I've done and everything like that, I mean, I I, I, I can't even get shot in Hollywood hardly these days. You know, if it, if it wasn't for my personal relationships, I wouldn't have worked in the last five I, years. I can tell you a really easy way to go down and get shot, but we'll leave that later. That's uh, golf course. Yeah. <laughs> um, try to knock over a three but, uh, these, uh, so I got yeah. So I got I got yeah. I got to I got to I have to create outside the box. I got to come up with my own concepts, my own shows, my own. You know, along with uh, with the relationships that I have, and that's you know that's why uh, coming down here, bumping into Jason again. Jason London and I have known each other, and as well as Jeremy, of course, we've known each other since we were teenagers. And uh, and when I got down here, when I saw the environment, when I saw you know what a, what it was, what a lush, rich environment it is. You know, because uh, you know a lot of production is is your environment that you're in. You can get so much out of production value because you have a great backdrop. You know, and the, the downtown area in Ocean Springs is just gorgeous. There's a there's some really great locations around here. You got the swamps, you got the beaches, you got the fishing docks, all kinds of really cool stuff. So when I started seeing that, I was like, oh, we, we have to do something here. We got we got to figure it out because uh, uh, Jason and I both have, a, you know, some type of Q value. We have credits. We've been in the industry a long time. We have a, uh, a fan base and. Uh, and uh, and it's kind of a you know a, a, a drum a dramedy it's you know what I mean it's like a thriller dramedy murder mystery it doesn't take itself too seriously you may even some, see me in there you may even see this guy in there uh, uh, keep that on the on the the couch. <laughs> <laughs> yes exactly so you know I mean and and I and you know I think that we can uh, I, based on the way that we're planning it is uh, I think we can get it done I think we can get all 12 episodes done in a very short amount of time block shooting them all and uh, and for a very low price uh, so you know I'm already talking with some some production companies out in California right now and some people that I've worked with uh, because for less than the cost of what we spend on one of these lifetime movies, uh, I can give them 12 episodes, 42 minutes each, you know, awesome. you know in, in less than a month. Uh, so that's what we're going for right now, because I know that we can flip those for for some actual FU money uh, once, they, once they're posted and finished. Have you ever thought about uh, getting in touch with like Shutter or one of the, the indie streaming platforms and just being like, give me money? <laughs> I mean, I, that's, that's a great I idea. I, I uh, I, I don't. I mean, is, is it is it possible? <laughs> I, I, I mean, would they? <laughs> I'm, they need content, and you've got content, and you could probably bang it out, and like you said, in a month. And you know, Supposedly also, yeah, we, uh, yeah, we, yeah, because I when we shot when I shot the uh, the web series that we were talking about with David Faustino, uh, we did twelve episodes of that for Sony Television. And uh, the, the, you know, we had 11 days to shoot 12 episodes in, and, but, we, but we had pre-written every single episode ahead of time. So what we did was, whether it was episode one, five, seven, and 10, 
all of the scenes that took place in the living room of the house or the bedroom of the house, we shot out every single scene from every single episode all in that, that time period. And even sometimes we would block shoot it in a way where we would shoot everything in one direction and then have the characters go change costumes, come back and then shoot the next scene in that direction. And then we'd flip the camera around and do the exact same thing and have people flip in and out of their costumes, which is a lot quicker than turning the cameras back and forth, you know, and do yourself. A favor. So I'm telling you, go watch these actors things. hate it. They're actors hate doing hell. that, but <laughs> the, the episodes are funny as hell. Yeah. It's called starving S T A R hyphen B I N G. Uh, you won't be able to find it anywhere because it's been pulled from the, the, the internet. Uh, but I have it on my Vimeo. I have like eight episodes on my Vimeo quietly out there, which I, which every day I think about taking down because I'm just waiting for the backlash. Uh, but, um, it's very politically incorrect. It's just <laughs> outrageous. I mean, I would be shot and, and flogged and beaten and, and tarred and feathered if we put this shit out today. But, um, you know, so so with that with that in mind, you know, that there's a way to block shoot this whole thing, even though it's a drama, a dramedy kind of thing, even though it's a, a little more extensive. You know, we can we can get this thing done the exact same style, uh, very very quickly, very efficiently. Uh, I mean, I was when I when I was directing the episodes of Starving, I was getting us out three hours early every day. The crew oh. was like, "What? How is that even possible?" Yeah, because <laughs> because you bing bing bing, you got the shots you wanted. Prepared. Boom, yeah. Prepared. Exactly. The Ed Wood style. I love it. It's, uh, it's very Lloyd Kaufman yeah. from Troma. That's how yeah. he shoots. It's like, all right, we got it. We got to move on. I don't have enough money to shoot anymore. Yeah. So let's get, let's move that's, on. Hey, that's what is, what is that in your hand? Is that one of those micheladas? What is that? No, this is a beer from uh, our local brewery called Twin Lights Brewing. They're uh, the oh, uh, it looks like it looks like one of those uh, tall cans of like a michelada or a chelada I'm, beer. Or, you I'm know, a those big, big right now. I'm a big michelada fan. So you know, uh, we'll send uh, Scott some Twin Lights. So. There you go. I mean, like a six. As long as you send some, you have to send some Ross Brewing along with it. So folks, folks don't. Some of that. <laughs> folks don't realize where the Michelada thing came from because, like, I, I was an old saying? school. Uh, I used to go to Mexico a lot when I was a kid. Well, I used to go there a lot when I was in high school. In, in high school, uh, because uh, it was eighteen to drink in TJ. Sure. And they had these. Uh, they had these. Uh, these crazy little like. Um, uh, down in Koreatown, they had these these places you can go and get IDs, California IDs at. And they did not care what you said. You know what I mean? You could give them, I'm 88 years old. And they're like, here you go. And so we just get ones that said we were 18 and we'd go down to TJ all the time and like, you know, party down there and stuff. But they, um, they would do this thing. They take a Tecate and they put Cholula sauce or, 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 right or, the or rim. one of yeah, the hot sauces on yeah. the top, squeeze lime on it, sprinkle a little salt on there and then mm -hmm. pop that sucker. And I was like, "What is that? What is that madness? I must partake." And oh boy, that is no, you're like, that's awesome. It's good stuff, man. I dressed the cate. Uh, mm -hmm. Mike had a fake ID. What was your name on the? My fake name was ID? Michael Lo Michael Logan. Michael Logan, and I mean Logan. I mean, gee, yeah, I wonder where you got that yeah, from. Yeah, I know. I was uh, <laughs> Michael but, Logan. Mike Run or? No, it's from Wolverine. He was Logan. Oh, Wolverine. Yeah. So, uh, uh, but this is back in what, what a TJ is. Oh, Tijuana. Tijuana. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not a place, yeah we were gonna... not the best place to go for the weekend. That wasn't the answer I was gonna place. give. But... <laughs> no, are you kidding? I I went drinking over in uh, the worst section of uh, Monmouth County. Juarez? <laughs> no, no, well, <laughs> Juarez, okay. New Jersey. Not even close. Now this <laughs> Juarez, New Jersey. I think there is a Juarez, New Jersey now. MS runs it. Did you ever <laughs> see Animal House when they go into the? Um, uh, the Dexter Lake Club. Do you mind if we dance with your dates? It was that place. I walked in there. Oh, wow. <laughs> I walked in there. I was a 15 year old white Catholic schoolboy. I had glasses on and I, <laughs> I was like dressed up like a preppy because I was a fucking idiot douche. Pardon my French. But uh, <laughs> I walked in there and I gave him my ID. The, the uh, bartender looks at me, laughs. Gives it back to me and says, you got balls and went and got me my beer. And I'm. Oh, I, no kidding. Yeah. And I had a, a Newport in my mouth. <laughs> Somebody took the Newport out of my mouth and started smoking it. And I'm like, all right, um, if I make it out of here alive. Well, first of all, first of all, I don't blame them because what the fuck were you doing smoking a Newport? <laughs> uh, because uh, I minty. I don't know. It's it. It was like chewing gum. See, y'all missed out, though. That being down here close to Louisiana, 
Um, like I said, I hit it right about the same time that the uh, the age changed from 18 to 21. But in Louisiana, they grandfathered you everybody in. You didn't even have to show an ID. You could take your high school yearbook up. <laughs> show the, I, I, wow. kid you, I kid you not. You could take your high school yearbook up and show, oh, hey, look, wow. here's me for the class of 88. Um, yeah, here, this is me. So that means I'm over 18 now. So yeah. All right. Go ahead. Go on in. Have your drink. The, the only reason why that worked with Scott is because he looked exactly yeah, the yeah. same. <laughs> he, oh, was, he was born. He was born and looking exactly like this. Yeah, my, I was just thinking everything. My mom hated birth. <laughs> but Scott, what, what the hell did you do with your yearbook? Once you got in there, it's not like you're going to put it in your back pocket. Well, no, no. That was the best part was you could actually take it. You, you show it to the, the front door, man. Then you take it back out of your car. And they just, they, they put the little stamp on you, whatever. Then after that, you go right in. Okay. All right. I just thought you wandered around with your yearbook. Just, hey, how you doing, ladies? You want to see me in? No, but no, but I did carry one in my car at any given time. <laughs> that is funny. But girls, take a look. I was. I, I, in, in, I, <laughs> yeah, in, in Hollywood, when I was growing up, there was like, you know, a series of bars that just didn't card. I mean, that was the 80s. You know, in the 1980s, Hollywood was like the Wild West. There was uh, the Formosa, which was our, our classic haunt. I started going there when I was about 17. There was the White Horse, which was, uh, you can imagine. Uh, there was the Dresden Room, which was a classic, like, you know, old 19, I think it was probably 1930s or 20s bar or whatever. Yeah. And it had the same. It had the same two people playing the yeah, piano. Marty and Elaine They've been there since they fucking built the place. Marty and Elaine. Ah, ah, ah. Marty ah, and Elaine. Exactly. Alive. They're in the lives. Yes. Yeah. You uh, <laughs> yes. you can see them in swing yes. in the movie. Been there? Oh, you only saw them in this. You haven't been there though. I've only seen the swingers. I've not actually been there yet. So. And oh, I was there live. I was. I, there. Yeah, I, I know. I didn't know these guys back then. I probably would not be alive right now. Oh, we were gentlemen. We were perfect gentlemen. I know Jeremy and you can only imagine. Well, it was actually back then. It was me and Balthazar Getty, David Arquette, uh, Rodney Harvey. Those are like my my three road dogs, and that you can imagine. <laughs> Hollywood royalty. <laughs> if you can call it that. I mean, they're they're pretty much you know the the family is. You know, everybody's in in the uh, the biz, so. Yeah, my family was in the business, but you know, my dad was a production designer. My mom was a graphic artist in in the music business and the theater business. So you know, I mean, I grew up around it for sure. Um, I wouldn't say any kind of Hollywood royalty, but my dad did do some badass stuff. My mom did some badass stuff. I was, you know, he was a production designer on. Uh, well, he was art director on Goonies. That's what really kind of set him. Whoa! You know, got him his first real. Real good gig. You just and then he, then he ended up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was art director on Goonies, and then he ended up production designer on uh, Patriot Games and Terminator Two and Twister, The Saint, The Shadow, uh, a bunch of other films. And oh, um, rated The Shadow and, and, so beautiful. He did well. That was just. I mean, this is a great story about this. Since you know about The Shadow, is because <laughs> The Shadow, the budget, the, the 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 set builds that they had for for it were were unbelievable and my dad was like you can't we can't afford to build these it's impossible on what you're saying but we can do forced perspective and he and and they were like they were ready to fire him you know and he ended up you know fighting and getting his way and he built these forced perspective sets i actually went on the sets forced perspective sets that made it look bigger than what they had originally uh -huh. wanted you know, so they, you know, they built the ceilings to go up and they come in and in and in where like actually the top is like, you know, like really small. But when you're looking up at it, it just looks like, you know, a huge, gigantic, tall you oh, know, or a very long hallway going down like far as you can go. But it was all forced perspective design, which is absolutely insane to 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 do you know in terms of the actual designing of it and get it right i mean it's extremely difficult but but my dad was it was an absolutely is an absolutely brilliant artist i mean just brilliant so well, uh, that's amazing uh, but i think that was uh yeah underrated movie a hugely underrated so I, I, very I underrated beautiful i mean the the set designs they don't they not only rival uh batman 89 i think they surpass it so totally totally 
So. And you would never, if you, if you go back and watch it again, keep an eye out for what I was talking about, about the forced perspective. Because if you really look, you'll go, oh, I see it. Yeah. You know what I mean? But you won't, you won't notice. Base. And even when you were on set live, it was difficult to, you know, like get it in focus where you're like, wow, you know, just uh, amazing guy, amazing designer. And, uh, and my mom did some cool stuff too. She did a lot of poster design for the, for, for bands in the seventies uh, and early eighties. And then ended up working for the Nederlanders and did poster design for plays and musicals. Nice. And, uh, and that's how I ended up in Los Angeles. She transferred from the Fox theater in Atlanta, Georgia to the Pantages, which is both owned by the Nederlanders and uh, ended up doing the, the graphic design for them at the Pantages. And then ended up at Capitol records after that, which was pretty cool. Wow. Did some, did a few, cool. you know, yeah, did, did some cool stuff. Yeah. 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 And a big shout out from Mike Strickland right there. He loved you in the stand, loved you in the stand. Yes, yes. Dude, I mean, the stand. Yeah, actually. I can't it. believe they're trying to redo the stand. What I know. I just saw that, that recently. Yeah. You're like, that what? microphone drop right there. Yeah. We already yeah. did this. You, you won't get any better than this. Come no. on. No. Come on. You will not get better than that. Come on, Harold. Can we not? Can we not have one movie or one miniseries or something go down in history as the only one? <laughs> That'd be nice, but Stephen <laughs> King's still like, cha-ching. <laughs> I can sell it again. Yeah. I'll do it. <laughs> so I mean, come on, absolutely. I mean, his son's doing beautiful stuff. Just let his son just take some for a while. I was trying to squeeze back in on it. I'm like, if you guys are redoing <laughs> the stand, I mean, hell, I, you know, I'll, I'll play I'm the deaf mute. I don't care. <laughs> be, be Randall Flag. You're you're perfect for it. Oh yeah, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> you're evil. You've got a nemesis. I played some evil characters. I a nemesis evil characters. over there, Kato. <laughs> I played. I played. He was evil there. Oh well, that was in that was in uh, uh, Supernatural. Uh, Supernatural. But I played. I played Ted Bundy. Uh, Wait, what? I played Ted Bundy oh, in American know. Icon. I played uh, Richard Speck, the mass murderer in Chicago Massacre. Do you, uh, you think cool. you've been typecast a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that bomb you planted in the stand killed a couple of people too. So well, it was after, yeah, it was after the stand though. I mean, because before I did the stand, I couldn't get cast as a bad guy to save my life. You hey, know? He's a good I lose. <laughs> yeah, but after the well, stand, I started. Winner. You know, people started to see me in a different light. <laughs> you, you gave him the uh, what are they? What did uh, James Gandolfini? The Manson lamps. You gave him the crazy eyes. The Manson lamps. <laughs> hey, look, so long as I didn't show up with a swastika tattoo to my forehead, uh, you know, that's, I'm all good. <laughs> hey, it worked for Ed Norton. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's renounced that role since. So <laughs> I would hope so. Now, if we could we just renounce the Hulk, we'd, we'd be fine. Yeah, we'd, we'd all be all right. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, oh, oh. Not that bad. <laughs> it was the after. It was the after. It was the, the after glow, that came out yeah. After, yeah. Final, Final never, cut. Final, you know, I just... I can only look at myself, you know, and, and, and my career as an actor or whatever. And like given, given any of those kind of opportunities for franchises or to be one of those kind of characters or whatever, why would you ever say no to the continuation of it? I don't get it. I would just say yes until I never had to work again. <laughs> so, so we need to get Corn involved in some of the, the Marvel Universe stuff. We need to think of a good character he could play in the Marvel Universe. I, I'd rather do more, more obscure stuff like i did rotten yeah. tail yeah but, i did i did a uh, but the um, marvel universe pays better yeah, yeah that's true the <laughs> rotten tail paid shit but i did uh rotten tail source point press which is is a really cool oh yeah they're great guys so i did rotten tail with them which was one of their first graphic novels one of their oddly enough best-selling ones which is about a, a scientist who gets bitten by a rabid rabbit in his lab and turns into a half man half bunny and ends up going on a vengeance killing spree in his old hometown He's where everybody man bullied him. As one guy. And, uh, it turned out great. Yeah, Brian Skiba, a uh, great director, a good friend of mine. Uh, he directed it and everything. And uh, uh, and it was just a fantastic piece. You know, un un unfortunately, uh, it it's hard to get stuff like that, you know, the indie stuff out there. Uh, but it turned out well. And uh, and playing um, uh, Rotten Tail was hilarious. You can probably find a picture of it. Yeah, uh, as me as I'll, I'll look for it while you talk about it. Hold yeah, on. yeah. So I mean, it, you know, I'm I'm in full bunny costume, you know, full bunny makeup and everything. But uh, but it's a comedy. It's a horror comedy. And that and the, the distribution company, uh, they they got all bent out of shape because it didn't. It wasn't a a traditional horror film. 
And so uh, that's a good one right there. Uh, and, and then that's me when I'm slightly turning it. So yeah, that's a good one right there. But um, so uh, anyway, um, they, they were like bent out of shape because it wasn't a, a traditional horror film. And, uh, and, and, and they tried to market it. So they did all of their advertising for it uh, as a regular horror film. And then people saw it and they're like, this is funny. And they're like, is it supposed to be funny? Because it didn't look like it was supposed to be funny in the commercials. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, oh, they just they yeah. screwed up. They totally it, screwed us. And who screwed it up? It was the suits, wasn't it? Yes, it was. It the was the suits. suits. It's always the suits, bro. Oh, no, no. There I am. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. I can see you in there. Yeah. I can see you behind the makeup. Yeah, rotten tail. <laughs> yeah, you can. Yeah, you can always recognize the teeth. <laughs> Milky Wayward actually came up with a, a a horror western would be nice. Horror western movie would be fantastic. It's, I think it's been tried but never been successfully done. Joe R. Land. What a way. Oh, oh, go yeah. ahead. Dan Sale did some beautiful stuff. The whole the Jonah Hex stuff. Cowboys was versus freaking, Aliens was kind of horror. You know, the worst part is, thing, I remember you know, meeting the guy, but. the guy who did Cowboys and Aliens. I remember meeting him in Megacon down in Orlando numerous times. Yeah. And he kept talking about how his book was going to be turned into a movie. His book, for like eight years, how his book was going to be turned into a movie. But, you, but like I said, he had done so many copies of it, had so much faith. You could go down there. And like out at the promo booth, there would be stacks upon stacks of his comic book just to take for free. And we always did. Well, then all of a sudden, lo and behold, the movie came out. And yeah, those those books ended up being making me a little bit of money. So nice. I'm happy on that. Right there. Nice. But that's confidence in yourself. I think a horror, I think a horror a western horror is a great idea. It's a fantastic I idea. Corn, what are you doing for the next hour and a half? <laughs> I got my pen. Yeah, he's writing. We're writing. Oh, the Sharpie, but that'll work. It's it writing still works. Me. I don't care. I'll write on the walls about it. It's, a, it's such a great idea, though. No, it's such a great idea. When you go into a horror, you know, like like a Western town, and you have the, you know, a, a weird creature, the chupacabra or whatever. I mean, it's just those settings without the technology, without the cell phones, without the calling the police, without the this, without it, strip all of that away and then throw, you know, a monster in it. You know, yeah. you're kind of even like Middle Ages would be, a, you know, even though they've tried to do that with um, M. Night Child. Oh, yeah. You know, well, the werewolves the, or whatever. Then they also had the. Uh, I can't, I can't say his last name. Uh, I've never uh, been able to say his last name. Was it the Abraham Lincoln one also? Was it the oh, Abraham the Lincoln? Versus Columbia. Oh, that was awesome, man. That, it was a better book. But yes, you're right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it always is. It, better, it always better is book. a better book. But I. Yeah, there there are some horror western comics out there. Like I said, Joe R. Lansdale did a lot of uh, like just some really cool stuff. So, and, and I think it would translate very well. And yeah, you have you have that the uh, the western town, and you know you got that old dude or not old, but like the the grizzled uh, ex gunfighter who's trying to make it as a farmer, and the first guy killed has got to be the marshal. Always got to be the marshal. Well, <laughs> always got to be the marshal. That was one of the best things I loved about Preacher, though, was the um, the Saint of All Killer storyline in there. It was oh. to be. I mean, I love the comic and stuff, but the the show was was good. But that I would have taken just a regular Saint of All Killer storyline <laughs> and enjoyed the hell out of it. Hey, cats so. a book, right? Yeah. Yeah, that uh, was that was no makeup on Rotten Corky. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, the abuse that I get. Uh, abuse. You know, poor Katso though. People didn't when Katso Nemec first appeared around twenty <laughs> or so. <laughs> pe pe people were so offended for me. I thought it was funny because I have a very thick skin. You know, I grew up a bunch uh, around a bunch of hip hop type dudes and stuff, and bagging on moms and bagging on each other was that's what you did for for your sport. So I don't I don't get offended very easily. And uh, and I just thought it was the funniest stuff ever. But some of the other people who followed on Twitter and were part of the same circles, they would constantly report Katzo and Katzo lost like several <laughs> accounts due, due to people reporting until finally I was like, Katzo so canceled. <laughs> and then people started thinking I was Katzo. And I'm like, do I really have like I'm 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 trying to survive here. I have I'm trying to pay bills and take care of kids. Do I have time to make fun of myself? No. No. <laughs> I don't have the time of the day. <laughs> yeah, he's talking about the whole hip hop thing too. Believe it or not, hopefully he doesn't get upset with me, but I got an opportunity to witness something that was absolutely phenomenal. 
Oh uh, Lord, no. And, uh, hold on. So so he he you know, he's an actor. He 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 writes. He does all this stuff. Does artwork. But believe it or not, I got a chance to listen to this man freestyle, and right. he is actually very very good. Easy. Don't ask him to do it again. He won't. No, he won't do it on camera. So. When we when we come up there, I did a whole album visit. back in the day when when me me and uh, some buddies of mine and when I was in you know just coming out. In fact, I did my first demo tape. My first demo as a rapper was with DJ Speed from NWA, who was my producer, and I oh, recorded it down at Easy East Studio when I was fifteen. Dude, <laughs> and uh, it That's was cool. and, and and like and then ended up then ended up with me and David David Arquette were in a group called Thirteenth Floor when we were seventeen. Uh, and we, along with Balthazar Getty, who's an amazing uh, music producer. And uh, and then after that, ended up in another group called Starship of Fools with uh, with a number of other rappers and uh, and Balthazar being our DJ and, and also a lot, doing a lot of our music production. And we ended up being signed by Motown and did an entire album with Motown New York, which uh, uh, our Deidre Tate, who was our head of uh, our, our rep, for our, our project, uh, uh, she ended up getting in, t in a horrible car wreck, unfortunately, and was never able to come back to work. And our project ended up getting shelved and never saw the light of day. So uh, I did a I did a whole album with Motown <laughs> when I was like eighteen. So yeah, when, when, when we come up, uh, he he won't he won't do it where where anybody else can see it, but uh, we'll uh, we'll we'll get some some beats flowing. When we get I don't there know, and, maybe and maybe y'all get a maybe, chance to, to watch him. Uh, well, we got a kegerator here, Corin. So maybe, yeah. Get <laughs> well, that, listen, if there's a kegerator, then somebody's going to be freestyling in no time. <laughs> Ooh, we actually have two Corin. Uh, one we have of them, two kegerators. Here. One's mead. <laughs> cider, <laughs> cider, cider. Well, all right, Ooh, well, well, whatever. Okay. It sounds oh. to say mead because it sounds like we've got Norse gods coming right. in here. Well, there's so. mead in the side. They're, 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 they're sponsored by probably one of the greatest breweries up in the New Jersey area. So. Uh, yeah, there's always a Ross Brewing beer on tap up there. Well, I know the ancient Druids used to make some type of mead out of like cherry wood sap or something ridiculous. I can't if remember. It, can ferment, you it can, was, you can, you can yeah, yeah. Alcohol. It sounded like some scary stuff. But uh, that you know, those Druids were some. They were a wild bunch. They were very <laughs> wild. Yeah, I I won't go into it. I mean, you be, especially when they had those Druish princesses. Oh God! Now we're going. <laughs> oh Scott! Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry. I went. I went. You, know. uh, you went there. He, 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 a boy. Uh, uh, it was uh, Mel. He went Mel Brooks. Went Mel Brooks on you. Mel Brooks on us. Did I just well, get back? The, on my uh, no, I think you're good. Wait. <laughs> no, with uh, with um, uh, it was um, what, what was the movie? Uh, Spaceballs? Spaceballs, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I went to a special uh, a, a special screening of Spaceballs when it came out. It was it was for uh, uh, a charity, and uh, I can't remember the, the charity. Uh, unfortunately, that's that's me. But uh, but I, they ended up sitting me at the dinner, the after screening at the dinner. They sat me right next to Mel Brooks. Oh, oh, cool. Cool. oh right next right next to him, literally right next to him. That <laughs> I, I was like, I, it was hard to speak. Because I was such a huge fan of his, you know, and I'm just sitting there like, I'm next to Mel Brooks. <laughs> it's like, like that's all I could think the whole time. <laughs> and that's a shame. You can't. I mean, Mel, Mel Brooks was such a genius, in my opinion. But you know, you couldn't yeah, have a Mel. He's still alive he with us. No. Easy Unless there, I, Scott. Let, let me check. Let, yeah, me, just, let me check TMZ to make just sure. Just checking, but yeah, he's still with us. <laughs> Before you all going strong, I know exactly what you're talking about, Corin, because we went to. Uh, the premiere of Jersey Girl, and George Carlin was sitting right in front of me. And it's like, what do you say to him? Oh, yeah. There you go. What, what, what do you say to him? What did you say to him? I said, move your fucking head. You got a huge <laughs> head. I can't see your goddamn screen. It's the one thing you could say that he would probably appreciate. <laughs> yeah. No, I didn't say so that. Because well, he's heard it all. He's no. heard it all, except for move your fucking head. He have, said, you, have you had a chance to see the new Bill and Ted yet? Not yet. No, Don't. this weekend. Actually, 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 he makes an appearance in it. Do you? Oh, you mean George Carlin? Yeah. No, not me. Not me. George Carlin. Corbin, 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 congratulations. No, I make an appearance, but I'm an extra. I'm an extra. <laughs> Very nice. so, uh, now, this Carl weekend. makes an appearance in there, and it's actually a great appearance. It's a, it's a great tribute to it. That's awesome. This weekend was uh, all about uh, Cobra Kai, so. I had to. I had oh, to dude, be that was freaking Kai. phenomenal, dude. Yeah. That last episode. Yeah, I, was, I, I, I had, I had a pit in my stomach trying to watch this thing. 
Are you sure that was a, a pit or well, it was a stargate? Or, 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 or was it or was it that old pole boy? You it was, it was, <laughs> it was yeah, that yeah, old boy. Old boy. <laughs> the pole boy. No, I mean, honestly, it, it it finished up really just me being. <laughs> it was a perfect ending because it or a season finale because it left me pissed off because now I don't want to know how everything's going to finish up. Sure. Now you won't until twenty twenty one. Yeah, I know. Have you had a chance to see it yet? No, I haven't watched any of it, it to it, be honest. It actually, what it does is it boils down to the, you know, there's been rumors for a long time, little little uh, people having different theories on it, how uh, that Daniel was actually the villain in the movie. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. That's what it, somebody mentioned. And that's me. basically what this is. They've yeah. taken that concept and turned it into a series that they've done two seasons out of so far. No, no, people love it. I mean, it's, it's, it's incredible. It's, it's actually. become a, a phenomenon. I mean, I, I just don't, I mean, that I don't really get because, I mean, if anybody saw the Dan, Daniel, a bully, uh, I well, mean, actually, when you I could have kicked his ass. When you go back and you watch it, it's, I mean, the whole thing is, you know, he, he steals Johnny's girlfriend. He comes in, you know, it he takes didn't away. steal Johnny with a back, dick. Go back and watch it. All oh, the fights, Lord. actually, all the fights, uh, Daniel actually Excuse me. starts and picks the fights. <laughs> 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 right, out. Wow. Corn's out, out, everybody. Corn's out. Wow. <laughs> what, <laughs> way to piss. That actually looked pretty good. Oh, yeah. He's your guest, Scott, for God's sakes. <sighs> that, that, I know. I mean, that, Charming. You, know, you know you're bad when they go to a freaking different universe to get away yeah. from you. I mean, uh, for Christ's sakes, Katzo loves me. So yeah, Katzo does I know I'm him. doing fine. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Right on, guys. But yeah, actually, that looked beautiful. I, I'm <laughs> yeah, now you can't yeah, come yeah. back. Come, you have to come back the same way. Oh my god, to come back and squeeze back through the same way. You have to come back the same way. Nope. So, <laughs> right. stage where, right. Where the fuck did that arm come from? Holy Christ! <laughs> okay, wait a second. See how I can fit in here. Okay, here. All right, here he comes back. He's, he's gonna he's gonna gate back through. Oh, yeah. oh. That was good. Oh, that was perfect. <laughs> oh, that's chilly. No. Did did everything come through, Corn? Did you leave anything behind? Uh, I don't. I do not want to tell you what's happening in there. Okay. I, yeah, I yeah. don't want to know. I saw the movie. I don't want to okay. know either. So, <laughs> I'm just saying that Chris Chris Judge Teal he has a flatulence issue, and it all gets trapped yeah. in there. So, anytime <laughs> oh. you're going through, you're 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 going through. You're, you're, Sorry, you're that one was on me. Yep. <laughs> I I just made uh, Elise send her children scurrying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We got here. Oh, Kay Howell's on there. Hey, what's up? Yeah, he just let it tilt. Mr. Howell, <laughs> Samantha Sheldon, Christopher Hewitt, the Dorenzo family. That sounds dangerous. I don't know if I want to. <laughs> sounds like uh, an old mob family or something. It does. Yeah. Don't piss uh, off the Dorenzos. Uh, Jen Lyles on 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 a point here. Milky Wayward. Which sounds delicious for some reason. It does, doesn't it? I don't know why. Milky, Milky. yeah, Milky. I'll, I'll eat a Milky Wayward. Oh, careful! <laughs> you know Maybe. You don't know okay, sorry. If I add, okay. <laughs> uh, if it was a candy bar, let me uh, caveat. Uh, uh, yeah, add. you need caveat. <laughs> and the direct <laughs> family's like, "LOL, you piece of crap." I'm like, "Thank you." <laughs> I didn't know the drink after all this. Ah, that's out. That's it. Uh, yeah, we are having a couple of beers here. I mean, we'll, we'll this, this one is called Land Shark. It's a uh, it's a very light yes. uh, island oh, style it's lager. Like, it's from. Uh, uh, I, I generally oh. don't uh, drink beers on camera or anything like that, but you know, for the uh, we're having a couple here tonight. Gotcha. Land Shark was uh, uh, it's brewed in Rehoboth Beach. I if I'm not mistaken, right. it's, it's actually it's <laughs> actually really light and really delicious and has a very low alcohol content, which is which is what I prefer. And it was a Saturday Night Live skit. Yes, Land Shark. Is. Oh yeah, no, 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 yeah, Land Sharks was hilarious. Land Shark. Yeah, knock, knock, knock. He's like, "Who's there?" Uh, pizza delivery? No, it's not. Uh, Mailgram? Yeah. No, it isn't. It's your mom. Uh, oh, open up. <laughs> <Land Shark. laughs> Sensitivity so, so, so. training 101. Very nice. Thank you, Beth. Yeah, there you go. It uh, was back when it was it. back when Saturday Night Live was actually funny. Yeah, that, that will be our next episode when we do a stream. Oh. Oh, next up was <laughs> sensitivity. Yeah. Thanks, yep. K Howell. <laughs> awesome. That's KZ. KZ, by the way, and a, a great author. Uh, amazing. Uh, he wrote a uh, a tome, I would call it. It's like a 500 and something page novel. So you're trying to compete with uh, the the stand? 
which was, I think, was originally the 530 something pages or 511 or 1093 pages. Then he had the, oh, was the original original, and then they cut it down to 500 and something 800 pages. It was still. Yeah, no. I don't know. I we, when I got the stand, I read I read like most of the first book. <laughs> I was like, Are you kidding me? Give me the script. Oh god, this is way way shorter. Way yeah. more easier. Where are the clip notes? Plus, it, it didn't have the scene with uh, with Harold Lauder and Nadine in the grocery store. Wait, only the people who've read the book will know what I'm talking about. Thank God that scene wasn't in there. <laughs> All right, now I want to know. Yeah, you don't, don't want to know. Uh, All right, I want to talk to my daughter. Uh-huh. She, she's read them all, so because if you're talking the scene that I'm yeah. I'm thinking of, then yeah, it wouldn't have been on ABC. That's for sure. No, 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 no. It would have been a Netflix original. No, <laughs> it would have been Skinamax. Yeah. Oh yes, <laughs> yes, Red Shoe Diaries. How beautiful! The Red Stand Diaries. The Red Stand mm. Diaries. Well, guys, thank y'all for coming by. I know we actually stayed a little bit longer than we were intending. Yeah, right, Not we at all. Uh, we're we got, having so much fun. We got to go on like a love now. Fest here. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and you guys are, like us. you guys are more than welcome. Uh, we're yeah, we're more than here. invited to come, come up, up here. here. For sure. And, uh, yeah, podcast in the studio. Uh, we'll take you around. We'll show you the sites of uh, Monmouth County. Yeah, for sure. Well, what, what are the sites? Uh, the quick stop, you know, the studio, the studio, <laughs> that's about it. Our sites, yes. <laughs> the quick stop, the, the corner with all the signs. Now, yeah. and actually, actually, if I get up there, we have to go and actually shoot us going to the, the most ridiculous, like the quick stop and the, yeah. Uh, oh yeah. You know, oh, the, 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 old, the old mailbox, the old mailbox well, no, on you, the corner. You, you have to go to the secret <laughs> stash. And we'll take you to the secret. The when secret was the last stash? time anybody saw a real mailbox, by the way? Uh, today I almost threw an empty <laughs> wine bottle in there. I have, I have, I have one. <laughs> I have one in front of my house. <laughs> well, guys, thank y'all for no, coming. No, you know by. the big blue ones. Oh, yeah, everybody else, thank y'all for coming in, and we will see y'all next time. Cheers, everyone. <laughs>